back to our coverage of Israel at war as fighting, of course, rages on for the 13th day now. Uh, groups in the United States and abroad are protesting Israeli military action in Gaza. Protests, as you have seen, were held outside the U.S. and Israeli consulates in Istanbul, across the Middle East uh, on Wednesday. Late Wednesday night also saw U.S. troops injured after three drones attacked U.S. bases in Iraq. Meanwhile, about 300 people were arrested in D.C. Let's take you there. Uh, this was Wednesday. They were protesting the war inside the Cannon House office building. And just look at the crowd that showed up. For more, let's bring in Dr. William Ruger, a commander in the U.S. Navy Reserve who was once nominated to be the U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan. Doctor, it's good to have you this morning. Thanks for having me. Um, I wanted to start off with this. As you know, a flood of misinformation has really shaped the views of the conflict that, that we're watching. And in fact, one of my Jewish colleagues yesterday was saying, you know, Israel does appear to be losing the media war in its battle with Hamas. Uh, do you agree with that? And how critical is it for the IDF's mission in Gaza that they combat misinformation and start winning over hearts and minds? Yeah, I'm not sure that Israel is losing that because of the fact that those visions that we saw, the, the pictures, the videos of what happened last Saturday are just so atrocious. And I think those have spread around the world. And and you see that, I think, in, in polling, right? So the Quinnipiac poll found that two-thirds of Americans are supportive of American military aid to Israel. And so I think that number will hold up uh, despite some of the images uh, that we're seeing, uh, whether real or disinformation on the other side, uh, because of the fact that people remember what happened that day. Uh, and I think that's a strength that Israel will have going into some of the congressional discussions around aid uh, and that we'll see, uh, I think, uh, w when President Biden speaks tonight. Yeah, the, these images have just been heartbreaking and seem to just get uh, more so by the day. I wanted to also talk to you about this looming ground invasion that we keep on waiting for. Israel has been on the cusp of it, uh, you know, going into Gaza for at least a week at this point, if not longer. We've all been waiting for word that it's just officially begun. For those of us not well versed in conflict, what's the strategy in delaying that this long? And do you think that's a smart move? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of it is political, shoring up international support, uh, but it's also that these are very challenging types of operations. I mean, fighting in cities is is incredibly dangerous for the uh, uh, offensive force. Uh, the Palestinians, uh, Hamas, would obviously have the kind of local knowledge about the terrain there. And so I'm sure that the IDF, uh, that the Israel is really trying to make sure that it's well prepared for this. Uh, you know, again, we saw this in Iraq, how difficult it is uh, to fight in the, these kind of like city by city, block by block uh, confrontations. And uh, I'm sure they're very concerned about the casualties that they might, uh, uh, you know, might uh, suffer. Uh, and they want to make sure that they can discriminate between as best as possible between uh, innocent civilians and Hamas. And that's very difficult in these types of operations. But of course, you know, Israel can't simply accede to what uh, some on the far left and obviously some in, in, in the international uh, community want, which is not doing something that it needs to do to meet its own security. And so you can see the real challenge here for Israel. Yeah. How do you limit the collateral damage, a.k.a. innocent lives, you know, in a mission of this magnitude? Uh, yeah, to your point, it's an extremely uh, sensitive thing to uh, keep in mind. Also, at this point in the war, we've heard reports that some 2,000 American troops will be sent to the Middle East in what's kind of more of a humanitarian medical assistance role rather than a combat role. But at least 30 Americans have been killed at this point. Many could be held hostage. Now you have these troops in Iraq injured after the drone strike following threats from Iranian-backed militias. Should we be there in a combat role? Well, fortunately, Israel is not asking for our military support in the direct sense of intervention. And I think that we should look at the last 20 years when the United States has been so intimately involved in the Middle East and be very wary of engaging again on the ground. I mean, whether it's been in Iraq, the nation building project in Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, the Horn of Africa, the United States has faced many challenges in actually meeting its strategic goals. And so I would be very wary. I, th I think that we could support Israel. Uh, that is something that, again, a lot of Americans uh, are favor. 
Uh, and that's actually what Israel has asked for so far, at least it, it looks that way. So again, I think a kind of restraint here and a realism about America's ability to accomplish its goals easily should keep us very careful before we sink back into the Middle East. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.